Hello everyone, welcome back. This is 1-8 basic circuits, piston extender circuits in the compact redstone series. I'm MU222 and today we're going to talk about mainly double piston extenders. And yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get started. I'll first talk about this double piston extender first. So this is also known as a 042 double piston extender. It works like this. You will understand more about how this circuit works in 1-11, Introduction to Timings, where you can uh, know how you can time cer several circuits and count uh, the timings of different components and first know the properties or how they would work, different circuits work. But anyways, I can still introduce you to some bits here. So here we see for the extension, the two tick is going to power this back piston and this dust is going to power the front piston so the extension just works like this and for the retraction what we can see this dust turns off first and then this two tick uh, would be able to retract the front piston because a piston actually only requires three game ticks in order to fully retract I say fully retract, although I know that it's two game ticks that it will retract, but then for it to be able to be retracted by another piston, it needs to be three game ticks. So, three game ticks is just 1.5 tick, by the way. So, this two tick more than enough. Uh, to be honest, I should uh, wire it with a repeater input, but uh, anyways, this still makes sense. So, three game ticks is enough, this is four game tick. So, this sticky piston is able to retract the sticky piston even with the case of player input and this 8 game tick or 4 tick repeater would be able to extend and retract this piston as well just in time because again this piston will retract this piston and this piston would be able to extend after 4 game ticks plus 3 game ticks so that's 7 game ticks which is less than 8 game ticks so this is going to be fired for one game tick so this is why the circuit works and hence the reason for the 2 4 as a 0 4 2 uh, method uh, one doesn't work because it cannot retract three works but then this repeater would not be able to extend and retract and we just know that this is the simplest solution we can get just like so now this is widely used when observers weren't a thing, but then now observers are a thing. So let me just introduce you a very simple generalized method of doing double piston extenders. That's using a four tick uh, pulse based double piston extender. This works for all three directions. So we have the upwards one that just does this. You might think how it works. So this four tick powers this, so very usual. And then this observer can power the piston here and also here via quasi connectivity so that's how this works so same principle for the horizontal one actually so again this observer can power the piston both here and here via quasi connectivity for the downwards case it's slightly a bit different we need to have this four tick and then two observers here and then with a single repeater here uh, notice that these two repeaters cannot be interchanged you have, must have a four tick here. So it works as usual. And this time, this piston is powered by this observer via quality connect connectivity and powered here as per usual. So yeah, so you can see the special configuration here and which also explains why this one doesn't work because this one, unlike this observer that will power the piston here, it doesn't because it only powers through this block to this piston. So this configuration doesn't work. So this indeed is not an actual double piston extender circuit. So anyways, and then I'll also introduce you one more. That is this one. This is also very commonly used. It's just with a lever, with a lever input and this piston can be constantly powered like so. It might be useful in some cases. So yeah. Notice that this you can basically also double up given the quasi connectivity. So yeah. So 
That is already essentially all the simple double physics extended circuits that I'm going to show you. I'll move on to a more special one, which is also just from a double physics extender, but it does a bit more than that, which is a semi hipster. This is developed by Melon BP, so we basically call it the Melon BP semi hipster. And it just basically does this. So you can see it pushes two blocks rather than just pushing one block like this and then just leaving this block in. It has two blocks. And then you can also see it actually retracts both of the blocks down. So you might be wondering how this works. Let me just show you with a separated module here. Okay, so let's just see how things would proceed. So this observer powers and then this observer powers, which powers this piston, right? So we have this, then this, this, this does powers. So it first will power this observer, so this is going to extend, and then we do the four tick here. But then notice this block is actually pushed out. So this will do its thing, and this piston here would be powered by nothing. And same for the case here. So it is in fact sort of a toggle to be honest. This is also the reason why this block is required to be a solid block. And for the opening case it's also very similar. This observer powers this one. This goes here, powers this observer. This block will be retracted. This vortex does this thing. So it's just another double physics extender like so. And that's why you see this works. Like so. And then there's also one variation of the Melon BP Semi Hipster, which is uh, instead to use a dropper hopper circuit. It is slightly faster, that's why people usually like this a bit more, although it's a bit more constrained because you cannot expand this. But, anyways, that's not our main concern. So these are the two Melon BP semi hipsters that I've introduced to you. And now we will talk about another type of extender. It's also come from another person. This is Snappers. So this is a concept called the Snappers extender. So what do I mean by a Snappers extender? Well, basically it is just an extender, specifically horizontal extenders that are being powered by observers detecting a chain of two tick repeaters. So this as an example. So you can see if I give it give this two pulses, it will extend and also retract. And it's based on the two tick repeaters. And in fact, you can also expand this by adding more pistons, more observers, and then more two tick repeaters. But uh, here I'll just have a double physics then next uh, instead, and you can also see how we can apply this uh, for larger extenders. So this is a quadruple physics extender built from the concepts of snappers extender, and I can just show you how it works. So this uh, actually let me check. This should be corresponding to four items, four four pulses, one. Two, three, four. So you can see the concept also applies here. Just a bunch of two ticks, a bunch of observers, and then the last one can actually be replaced by a ho by a hopper and then an, obs an observer. So uh, just for speed. So technically here you can also switch this to like this. And yeah, you can see how the concepts of snappers extenders can be applied to large extenders so you can always increase the amount of extenders in front up to 12 basically because of push limit so yeah it will be a fairly useful circuit if you're doing large extenders although you can also kind of see one of the limitations of it it is that snappers extender requires you to build in front of the extender so we usually cannot do that unless we are doing some specific types of doors. So this is one of its limitations.
But either way, it's still a very useful circuit. At least it serves as a working extender and a very useful algorithm as well. So yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about Snapper's extender. I will talk briefly about some simple uh, double pitch extender se sequences. So usually for double pitch extender sequences, you have seen them before, uh, like the four tick pole spaced double extender. So this is thing as an example. What this is doing is it powers this here, then powers this here, powers th this here, and then powers this here. So if we mark this top observer as A and this bottom observer as B, what this is essentially doing is A, B, A, B. So A, B, A, B. If we do it again, it will just retract. So this is the basis for the four tick uh, double pitch extenders. However, there's also an alternative. That is, instead of doing A, B, A, B, we do B, A, B. And then for the retraction, same thing, B, A, B. This works, actually. Hence, we have the standard sequence, which is A, B, A, B, and the alternative sequence, B, A, B. B, A, B is just missing an A from the initial for the standard one. You might think, why do I have to introduce you this? Well, basically, in some situations, you find the standard sequence to be useful, while in other situations, the standard sequence might be a bit too complicated to uh, wire in some situations. So the alternative sequence is used, and having one more way to power your double pitch extenders is better than less, to be honest. So even though uh, this would require basically a toggle on A, it still remains useful in some situations, and perhaps in one of your exercises, which I'm now going to discuss. So for the exercises, since you have already had three videos, including this one, on me talking about some basic circuits, I would like you to apply your knowledge to some of the circuits or the exercises mentioned here uh, because ultimately this series is to help you to uh, foundate your knowledge on piston door wiring let's just say and uh, ultimately redstone compacting I guess so you should have some practices over some at least basic piston extenders or piston doors and what better way to do practice by doing exercises. So here I have four exercises basically. The first one is just an exercise that uh, tells you to build a ceiling, uh, a ceiling semi hipster door. So unlike this floor hipster door, this is a ceiling hipster door. So I've given you some circuits already for your e for your easier building instead of thinking of various solutions that might not work. So this here you just have to make sure that they the pistons power such that it gives this position. And then when you press the button again it will return to this position. And I can give you one hint is that this is a button input and then this is an observer. So basically I want you to have this observer line to be powered twice because a button press would correspond to two observer pulses. So you can already see what it will happen when I give two pulses to here. That is, it will already do the closing. Very nice. And then if you see the opening, it will do this. But actually you don't have you don't have to worry about this block pushing back because you should be able to use a double piston extender circuit to block this off. So no worries on that. The second question is quite similar, which is to tell you to have to wire this thing, this triple piston extender, such that it reaches this position, and then when you press the button again, it will reach back to this position. And I've given you this space in which some of you might find it hard to fit in double piston extender circuits, but I will give you a hint is that you should use the alternative sequence for the top two pistons. 
the third one is actually just another four hipster here, but then we double up. I want you to make two of them, and then they are connected like this together. So decide on your input device, and then you just have to make sure that the blocks are going to be in this position, and then when you do another time, it will go back to this position. So yeah, the last one is actually an actual piston door. Uh, this is the door pattern. So when you are building, when you're building it, so make sure you re would remove the sign wall. So yeah, this is the door pattern, and I've given you the door pattern, the piston layout, and the top circuits here. So I've already set up this little top circuit that will already fire the top, the four top pistons, like so. So just complete the door basically. And there's also a volume res restriction, which is 10 by 8 by 2, 160 blocks, which is exactly the layout size for this piston layout. So just apply your knowledge back from 1-6 to 1-8. So 1-6 would be uh, basic circuits, pole signal conversion. And then 1-7 would be... Basic circuits, pulse extenders, multiplies, and clocks. I'm not sure if you actually need anything from 1-7, but then you'll see. So, yeah. And then also apply some knowledge from this video to help you to complete with the exercises. So, as always, good luck on the exercises, and I hope you enjoy them, as well as learning some uh, knowledge on uh, piston door wiring. And, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions... Uh, feel free to leave in the comments, of course. And as always, the solutions are at the back, so uh, spoilers. So, yeah. Anyway, so thank you for watching. I will see you in 1-9, basic circuits, logic gates, and latches. Thank you.